All right, what's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Super here and welcome back to another Mortal Kombat 1 video. Today is going to be a hot one because we're going to be discussing what Mortal Kombat game has the best roster. Does Mortal Kombat 1 have the greatest roster of all time? Now, I kind of want to leave this debate for only NetherRealm titles. So, UMK3 can't go back there. Obviously, no Armageddon, no Trilogy. I think Armageddon just hands down has the best roster of all time if you just want to be like black and white about it because it has literally every Mortal Kombat character ever created. So, you could even create your own fighter. <laughs> so, uh, Armageddon has the greatest roster. I think we could all agree on that. But from the NetherRealm titles, meaning Mortal Kombat 9, Mortal Kombat X, MK11, and MK1, does Mortal Kombat 1 have the greatest roster of all time? And we are going to include in the guests or the characters in general that are going to be coming in to Mortal Kombat 1 because those characters aren't going to be, uh, you know, available for a really long time. So we're not going to have a complete picture, but we do have a complete picture because we know what's coming in the future so leave a thumbs up on the video it really helps out and also leave your comment down below let me know which Mortal Kombat game you think has the best roster I think this is all gonna come down to personal preference and I'm probably gonna get some grief in the comments because you guys know how much I love Mortal Kombat X and I think Mortal Kombat X has a chance to be number one for me but that's just me personally. Um, so let's start off with the beginning. Uh, let's take this off the screen for a bit. And we go to MK9. MK9 has almost a perfect roster. It's crazy. Actually, it might be a perfect roster. Because MK9 has all the male ninjas, all the female ninjas. They have the robots. And they have really cool guest characters. Two of them, to be exact. One of them was PlayStation exclusive. That's Kratos, which is not on the screen. And the other one is Freddy Krueger, the greatest horror movie icon of all time. And then you brought in Rain, Kenshi, and Scarlet as DLC. I mean, it is really hard to beat this roster. Because this game was pretty much a retelling of the original three Mortal Kombat games. Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3. So all the char all the fan favorite characters in MK1, 2, and 3 are pretty much in here. So it's really hard. If you're just, uh, even if you're not just a hardcore Mortal Kombat fan because the guest characters are awesome. Kratos and Freddy Krueger. It's really hard to beat this roster. Yeah, looking at it, it's it's going to be really hard to beat this roster. That's why a lot of people have always said that MK9 has the greatest roster of all time. But this is going to come down to personal preference. So the biggest positives, in my opinion, about this roster is that it has every ninja. It has every female ninja. It has the robots. It has classic characters. Obviously, Liu Kang, Sonya, Jax. It has... Cabal, Shiva, Quan Chi, Lord Raiden, Shang Tsung, Striker, Nightwolf. And it has fucking Freddy Krueger, guys. I love Freddy Krueger so much. It has Freddy Krueger. And then it has Kratos, too. Yeah, this roster is going to be hard to beat. Let me know what you guys think. What's your highlight of the MK9 roster? Uh, we're going to go into some of the newer games that I actually have on my or not my computer on my console here so Mortal Kombat X is my personal favorite game of all time not only Mortal Kombat game not only fighting game my favorite game of all time because it literally changed my life and I could go into random character select have any character be chosen and have a good time playing that character I think this roster right here is amazing it does have one thing that some people might not like which is the introduction of a lot of new characters 
Kotal Khan, which I think we could all agree is a badass in this game, uh, gameplay-wise and everything. You had Farah Tor. Obviously, we just got Farah as a cameo fighter in MK1. We had Devora. We had Takeda. Cassie. Jackie. And Kung Jin. So we had a lot of new characters being introduced into Mortal Kombat through MKX. And that might be a negative for a lot of people. For me personally, I don't think it's a negative. Because Cassie Cage ended up being one of my favorite characters ever. And again, this is going to be all personal preference what, you're, what you think the best roster is. Jackie. She is incredibly fun in this game with Shotgun. Obviously, Takeda, one of the most popular new characters introduced into Mortal Kombat, even made it onto MK1 as DLC. Uh, Devorah made it into MK11. She was actually an a important part. She was an important part of the, this game as well. Uh, Ferator, we had Farah make it as a cameo fighter. Kotokan made it to MK11. And who could forget? I gotta save the best for last. Aaron Black. A game that has Aaron Black, Ermac, Sector, Katana, Cassie. It's really hard for me personally to go against MKX's roster with the boy Aaron Black in here. Not only that, I think the biggest highlight of Mortal Kombat X is the horror movie icons you have alien and predator in a mortal kombat game think about that you have alien a xenomorph and you have a predator in mkx that ain't it you got jason Voorhees. other than michael myers probably the most iconic horror movie icon ever well, I guess Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, you know, the, those are the trio, the most iconic slasher horror movie icons ever. And then you have Leatherface. Just below that tier, still really popular, was one of the most shocking character reveals I've ever seen, along with the Ninja Turtles, because I just, honestly, I did not expect to see Leatherface run through the woods and chainsaw Ermac. I think it was Ermac crazy crazy surprise but i think the the best highlight of mkx honestly is the horror movie characters the guest dlc characters is a highlight of the roster in mkx i mean that that's the biggest highlight in my opinion but still you have the normal mortal kombat characters as dlc triborg four robots in one triborg. sector Cyrax, Smokey, and Cyber Sub Zero. You have all the robots in one character. They introduced Tremor into MKX, brought back Tanya from MK4, and then they brought in the crazy wild card that a lot of people did not expect or want, but. <laughs> <laughs> Boraicho ended up being like one of the weirdest, craziest characters in this game. Especially with Drunken Master Boraicho, I love playing. So, the DLC characters in general of this game were awesome. Um, Big Daddy Goro. Yeah, this roster is amazing. I love this roster. Now... I think this is probably my going to be my pick for roster because I hold this game near and dear to my heart. And I truly believe that this roster is amazing. Um, but I don't think that it beats out MK9. As a roster, as a complete package, I don't think it beats out MK9. I still think MK9 takes it. Let's move on to MK11. I'll give you guys my solid... What the hell? This was supposed to load quickly. I'm going to give you guys my solid pick at the end of the video. I'm collecting my thoughts, collecting all the information, all the data 
that I'm compiling for this video, going through the different rosters, and I'm gonna make my pick as to which one I think is the greatest roster in Mortal Kombat history. All right, here we are. Mortal Kombat 11's roster. Really, really big roster. I think 35 characters, 37 characters, something like that. Huge roster. Um, what what are some of the highlights in this one? Uh, they brought back a lot of uh, a lot of characters from MKX that were fan favorites, like new characters. Obviously, Aaron Black, Devora, uh, Kotokan. They actually had new character introduced, who I think is one of the coolest characters in Mortal Kombat history now, with Lord Garrus. I love his playstyle, um, and I love the fact that they included him again in MK1. Brought back Shang Tsung as a DLC character, right? He was a DLC character? Pre-order bonus? Oh no, the pre-order bonus was Shao Kahn, baby. Uh, Frosty you unlock by playing the story mode. Nightwolf was a DLC character. Hmm, trying to see here. Maybe, maybe I'm a little, like, biased because a lot of the characters are really cool, but they're not as fun to play as Mortal Kombat X because you do have a lot of characters that were in Mortal Kombat X. Um, but then you brought in Noob Saibot, Cabal, Scarlet, uh, Fujin later as a DLC character, Rain later as a DLC character, uh, Mama Sindel, Melina as a DLC character. Yeah, characters like Jade who didn't make it onto MKX. Yeah, again, I think the uh, DLC characters are some of the biggest highlights on the MK11 roster. Who thought that Joker was going to make it onto MK11? I think it was supposed to be Ash Williams, but some sort of legal situation prevented that from happening because it was very clear that they were teasing Ash as being one of the guest DLC characters, along with Spawn and... I forgot who was the other one. Who was the other guest that they were teasing? Was it just those two? It might have just been those two for the first... Oh, Terminator. Um, but, yeah... I mean, Joker's in this game, and I'm a huge Joker fan, I'm sure a lot of you guys are as well, and his gameplay style is actually really unique and fun, because they could have easily copied and pasted Injustice Joker, but they went on a, in a different route, way different route, and gave him some crazy unique things. Obviously, I think the biggest highlight of Mortal Kombat 11 is the fact that Spawn finally made it into a Mortal Kombat game. Not only that, but Spawn is actually one of the few characters in this game that has a lot of combo potential. Uh, as far as if you want to use his... Um, uh, man, what the hell is the move called? His Soul Forfeit move. If you use a Soul Forfeit move, it allows you to do easy crushing blows. And you get some crazy combos, crazy damage. Um, but other than that, he doesn't have... Yeah, actually, other than Soul Forfeit, he doesn't actually have crazy combo potential he has a lot of damage potential with the um flying stab move but he doesn't have a lot of combo potential but just the fact that spawn made it into a mortal kombat game gives mk11 roster a huge boost in my opinion because everyone has been wanting spawn in a mortal kombat game since the beginning of time when character when guest dlc characters were being introduced and he finally made it onto MK11. And presentation wise, animation wise, the way he looks, insane. His intros, his outros, his costumes, everything about Swan is just so badass, except for his gameplay. <laughs> but you could say a lot of that, you could say the same thing about a lot of characters in this game, gameplay wise. Um, but just the fact that Spawn made it into a Mortal Kombat game is just, it's, it was pretty much like a dream come true guest character for a lot of people. Then they brought in some characters who they never brought into a 2D Mortal Kombat game, Fujin. Um, let me see who else. No, I think Fujin was the only one, right? <laughs> Uh, as far as a DLC character, but then you have uh, the, you know, 
80s movies, action characters, Rambo, you had RoboCop, you had Arnold as a T-800, but it wasn't actually Arnold's voice. Um, then you had guest characters like Mama Sindel, you had Melina, Rain, Fujin, a new character introduced in Cetrion that I absolutely hated with all my guts because she was just zoning, 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 run away, run away, run away, run away. So I'm not talking about her anymore. Um, oh, I forgot that we had uh, more combat movie skins in MK11 as well. Cool. But you also have your, your traditional characters, Scorpion, Sub-Zero. Uh, sadly, you don't have a lot of ninjas. Uh, that's one of the big negatives, in my opinion, of this game. You only have Scorpion, you have Sub-Zero, you have Noob Cybot, and then you have Rain. That's it. You have no Ermac, you have no Reptilio, uh, you have no Smoke. So I think that's a huge downside. And I'm going to say already that I think Mortal Kombat X's roster is a lot better than Mortal Kombat 11's roster. Even though you have Spawn in MK11. That's a huge positive for MK11. But I'm just going to come out and say it for me personally. I think MKX has a way better roster than MK11. Let's move on to Mortal Kombat 1. The current game. Alright, so MK1 has a lot going for it. If you include Noob Saibot coming into Mortal Kombat 1. Mortal Kombat 1 now has every ninja similar to MK9. You're going to have Noob Saibot come in. You have Ermac. You have Rain. You have Smoke, you have Scorpion, Reptilio, and then you have Sub-Zero. You have every single classic ninja in one game. That hasn't happened since MK9, and I am so happy that they're all in the game. Gameplay-wise, you know, some of, some of these, like Scorpion, you know, they could use a little bit more excitement, but characters like Ermac, DLC character, uh, I'm sure Noob Saibal is going to be crazy. Uh, smoke, you know, has his cancels just in your face. Rain with his UMK3 skin now. Uh, Reptilio, if you know how to use Reptile, he could be really, really fun. But unfortunately, my Reptile sucks. Uh, Sub-Zero, he struggles sometimes. But, you know, he has really cool combos with uh, his meter burn dive kick, stuff like that. But just the fact that the all the classic ninjas are going to be in one game is just amazing. Uh, then you have the robots. Obviously, the, the, robot, bleh, the robots are coming in to MK1 on September 24th. We have Cyrax and Sector. Will they come with a Cyber Sub-Zero like secret variation? That would be awesome, right? I don't think that's going to happen because there's no variations here. But Cyrax and Sector are coming in. We're not going to be talking about the guest DLC characters because they're like probably way further down the line. Um, but... We have the female ninjas, we have Kitana, Melina, Tanya, and then we have Mama Sindel. You have 3D era characters that have never been in a 2D Mortal Kombat game. We have fan favorites that people have been asking for for a long time. Havoc, Nitara, Ashra, and then Reiko. These characters everyone was asking for these characters let's put lee may in there i forgot that she was there <laughs> lee may these characters have been fan favorite and highly requested characters for a very long time they put them in this game and then you had you just have fan favorites in general like kenshi like baraka they brought back garris which I think was the coolest new character introduced in Mortal Kombat 11. Way better than Collector. Way better than Cetrion. And I think those were the only characters introduced. Um, obviously, you had Johnny Cage, Liu Kang, Raiden. Just fan favorites in general. Uh, they brought back Shang Tsung. Crucial part of the story mode. Uh, they have a boss character. You know, like MKX had Big Daddy Goro. Uh... They brought a boss character to be on the main roster. I guess uh, Shao Kahn was a boss character, and they brought him into the main roster in MK11 too. But changed up his uh, story to General Shao. Let me see. Am I missing anyone else? Should I go to the DLC characters? All right, let's talk about the DLC characters. We have superhero show-themed 
guest characters with Omni-Man, Peacemaker, and Homelander. And then the Mortal Kombat characters were Quan Chi, Takeda, and Ermac. The fact that Ermac is in the game now, I'm just so, so happy. I remember when the roster was being made and being revealed there was no Ermac, and then he appeared as a DLC character. I was so relieved, so happy. I'm still really happy he's in the game. His playstyle is really fun. Combo potential is really good. Uh, Takeda, they got a lot of uh, they got a lot of moves from Shirai Ryu Takeda, Lasher Takeda. Put him into this Takeda with some new moves, and you have a crazy fun character with a lot of combo potential. Quan Chi, they changed up his gameplay a lot, but they kept it similar in one way. For Mortal Kombat X, Sorcerer Quan Chi, put down the spell, you get a hit of armor. Same thing with the portal in this game. If you put down the meter burn portal, you feel like you're playing MKX, Sorcerer Quan Chi, and it feels so good to have your opponent be scared out of their mind with the portal. Uh, they changed up his gameplay a lot when it comes to some of the help that he gets. Uh, he had Puggles in MKX, uh, and in this game, he has Nether Beasts, Tentacle Monsters, crazy, crazy animations to his gameplay. Uh, I think they made Quan Chi fun, but also they changed up his animations enough to be very impressive, like tentacle monsters you never thought that Quan Chi was into that but I guess he is <laughs> and he's a lot of fun uh I love using him with Sub-Zero still uh that was like my day one pick for Quan Chi I just love that team but the guest DLC characters these were always sort of like uh okay you know I have zero attachment to Omni-Man and Peacemaker I've never watched their shows, and I don't think I'm going to watch their shows, even though a lot of people said they're good. I just have a hard time watching new things and investing time into new things. Homelander, obviously, I love because I've been watching The Boys for a long time, and I feel like his intro, his dialogue with a lot of characters is just hilarious, even though Anthony Starr doesn't do the voice, which really sucks. I still really like what they did with Homelander. So, Homelander... A plus for me. I love Homelander. Um, these two characters are really interesting because even though I don't watch your show and I have no attachment to them, I really love what they did gameplay wise with these characters. There's no better feeling than to do the Ultra Instinct uh, Viltrum stance with Omni Man. Someone swinging away, hitting nothing but air, and grabbing their face. That shit is so exciting. It feels so good to do. Uh, so I think they did a really good job with Omni-Man, but honestly, the biggest surprise for me, and I know that he got really annoying for a lot of people to deal with online, especially with Chameleon, uh, they, he did get nerfed after that, but he's still annoying to fight against, but I, Peacemaker really caught me off guard with how much fun he is. I love using him with Cyrax. I don't know if you could do the same things that I was doing because they changed up the way Cyrax's bomb works. So I don't know if I could even do the same things I was doing with Cyrax and Peacemaker uh, as far as the bomb setups in the corner. But just in general, Peacemaker has such a unique set of moves and is just really, really, really fun to play with. He might be annoying as hell to fight against, but I think he's really, really fun to play with. Um, so that's the MK1 roster. I got to say, guys, I think MK1 roster is right there next to MK9 as the greatest roster in the history of Mortal Kombat. With the inclusion of Cyrax, Sector, and Noob Cybot, and then obviously the guest DLC characters are going to come later, how can you deny Mortal Kombat 1 the title of the greatest roster in Mortal Kombat history? Obviously, asterisk on you cannot include MK Trilogy and you cannot include <laughs> Armageddon because that's just a compilation of a lot of characters. Armageddon, every character, right? And I think UMK3, I think MK9 has a better roster than UMK3 anyway, so that's out the window. But. 
having all the ninjas in one game when Noob Saibal gets included, having the robots come in, that was one of the missing pieces in this roster. Having a lot of fan favorite, highly requested 3D era characters that have been brought into MK1, Ashura, Natara, Havoc, you know, those, and Reiko, Lee Mei. Man, it is really hard to argue against MK1 being the greatest roster of all time. I think by the end of its life cycle, it will 100% be the greatest roster of all, excuse me, of all time. I think most people are going to pick either MK9 or, or MK1. There's going to be a lot of people who pick MK11 as well. I think MKX has my favorite roster of all time. I think I think it's the best, but just overall, like if you want to be black and white about it, it's hard to beat MK9, but I think Mortal Kombat X has the greatest roster of all time. Um, and MK1, I think by the end of the life cycle, will have the best roster of all time because you have so many fan favorites, you have all the ninjas, you're bringing in robots, you have a lot of highly requested 3D era characters. It's almost perfect. It just has to be complete. And especially if they add even more Mortal Kombat characters in a potential combat pack 3 or something, it's just going to be even further. Uh, it's it's going to close the gap even more to MK9. And like I said, I do think MK1 will have the greatest roster by the time the game's life cycle is over. So that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the discussion. And I will see you guys next time. What's going on? It's Super here. And thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you aren't subscribed already, make sure you guys do so. And if you want to see some more, there's videos popping up on the screen right now. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.